Welcome back to the lab folks. So what we're going to do today is kind of part two of my revamping my mini lab. So we're going to have a look today at this B-side power supply, which I'm not actually going to use in the mini lab that much. It'll go up there and be part of that kit from time to time. But I'm basically going to use this in my main lab. And the reason I got this was because it can handle a decent amount of current and a decent amount of voltage at the same time. We're total of about 300 watts. We're going to have a look at this scope. This Hamatech scope is going to go up in my lab, at least for the time being. If I try it out and I don't like it, I can always put my signalant back in there. We're also going to use this probe here to have a look at the power supply, to look at the noise on it. Let's get started. First, I want to look at the power supply itself. So I'm going to hook that up to a, a DC load, and then going to hook up this probe to it. So we're not going to get into very deep detail about it. I just want to see if it's going to suit my needs as far as uh, noise and all that is concerned. I wanted the power supply to be at least serviceable. All right, so let's get this turned off here. Actually, this is running off a, a power bank here, which I got from AliExpress. All this stuff actually was purchased from AliExpress, every single bit of it. But let me get the scope out of the way for now, and we'll have a look at this power supply. So let me set it up, and I'll come right back, and we'll begin looking at it. Okay, folks, so I've got uh, a load set up over here, and I've got the power supply is set up for a output of 15 volts and current of, let's just make that 20. So we're at the maximum 300 watts for this power supply. And I have the load is set up to also take 20 amps. If we look at the scope, let me get the scope up there right now. If we look at the scope there, with nothing turned on, with just all this wiring going across my lab and picking up the noise from all the LED lighting in this place. So we're picking up about, uh, let's say, let's call it 18 millivolts RMS of noise. So I'm going to be looking for a substantial increase in that or not as I put this thing under test. Let's just go through it very briefly from a, a user perspective. It does have a, a USB output here, and I will set that up to use that with the oscilloscope when I look at that. And we have like three presets here if you wanted to set them up. I mean, you can change the over voltage protection, over current protection. It'll trip the power supply off when either, either one of those limits are hit. If you go into the user interface key, you can set the voltage by moving along here and then just twiddling the knob. And you do the same with the current. So that's basically how it's all done. Very easy to use power supply. It has a USB port on the back that you can use to hook it up to a computer and you can program it from a computer. Uh, one thing I will note is that the binding posts are not a standard 19 millimeters apart, but uh, that's okay. I guess we can forgive it for that. Okay, I'm ready to turn it on right now. Fan comes on right away at 298 watts here. I guess enough resistance in the line here. I can't get a full 20 amps. If you notice there that the noise has not gone up at all. We're going to do a little turn on, turn off thing on it as well. Yeah, yeah. so here at maximum power, we have no problem at all. It didn't add any noise at all. Okay, we'll set the current down to seven and a half amps. And we'll put this up to 40 volts. Okay, we're all set for the test. I'm going to set the load. All right, we turn it on now. Look for the noise. Okay, here we're getting a little increase in noise. We've gone up from 18 to 20. So it's been a two millivolt increase in noise. And actually that's settling back down to more like 18 or 19 again. Yeah, I'm very pleased with this so far. So we've looked at both the um, maximum current situation, the maximum voltage situation up at the maximum load. And uh, in either case, we got no more than two millivolts of additional noise in the environment. So now let's, uh, let me set up the oscilloscope to look at the turn on and turn off and see what that looks like. And we'll try that at the maximum low and then somewhere in the middle and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so how do I have it set up here? I've got it set up for 30 volts at 10 amps. That'll give us up to our 300 watts. And I've got the oscilloscope set up on DC coupling. I've got it at five volts per division and I'm at a sweep of 50 milliseconds per division. So let's have a look. I'm going to hit the power on switch right now. Well, that's pretty nice, I have to say. It's it's not absolutely perfect. Uh, you probably see something better out of a $15,000 power supply from Keysight these days, but uh, you know it, it does have a little bit of ripple on it the way up. Let's take a couple of samples of that and see if they're all just as good or bad or same. Exactly the same, no problem at all. But let's uh, let's reduce the power down a little bit here. 
Let's do that by taking the voltage down to maybe 10 volts. Yeah, 10 volts at 10 amps, that'll give us 100 watts. That'll give us our nice medium here. So we'll increase the scale here. We'll go to 2.5 volts per division. Will that be too much? We'll have a look. Beautiful. That's the sort of thing that you want to see, right? That is absolutely, that's really nice. So let's see if that was a fluke or not. We'll have a couple of goes at this can here. Nope. Oh, perfect every time. All right, I'm going to set up now to look at the falling voltage when I switch it off. We'll see how that looks there. Okay, I've set the trigger on the scope for falling edge. We have it on now. We're putting out approximately 100 watts, 98.8, and we're going to turn it off. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's give it a couple more tries. Beautiful. Oh, well, no complaints so far for a really inexpensive power supply. I think this is going to be a nice addition. Let me, uh, let me bump up the voltage again to 30 and we'll have a look at it again. Turn it off. That's ah, beautiful. Turn it on. Turn it off. One more time for good luck. All right, I think I'm very pleased with the little power supply. I think it's going to come in very handy. And now I'm going to set up to have a look at the oscilloscope. Hey okay, folks, we're back here with the oscilloscope. This is the Hanmatec DOS 1104. It's 110 megahertz, although it's actually a little bit better than that. I'll show you that. And up to one giga samples per second. Got all the basic features that you should have. I mean, it's got, it's got four channels. It has one nice feature in that you can have two um, vertical controls on at the same time. That's really good for just doing two channel stuff. You can don't have to switch back and forth between them. It's got the horizontal, it's got your trigger, and it's got your multifunction knob. All your different menus are available down here. Auto set utility, measure, acquire, cursor, and copy. And then it's got buttons you can select from within the menu. So you'll see uh, as we bounce through it. It powers off DC, 5 volts DC, so that's handy. Right now I have it being powered off our B-side power supply here. And on the back there's also a USB output. You can hook it up to a PC. I want to show you something else though. So normally it stands up like this, which is pretty good. But it's a little bit tippy, but not any more tippy than any other oscilloscope. But they have a really nice feature of these legs here. They tilt back like that. And what that does, it causes the scope to tilt back quite a bit. So it's very handy for sitting on a bench while you're sitting down. And then it, your controls all work. You can press them and it does not tippy at all. That is a very handy feature which I probably will use. But for now, let's just put it down like this and have a look at it. Now the first thing I want to do is I, I want to show you this bandwidth. So let's uh, start off the fun and games at 80. That's where I wanted to be. And we'll do the auto set again on it. Okay, so we've got 676 millivolts. We're looking for it to stay above 475 millivolts. So we'll see where we get below 475 millivolts and that would be our bandwidth. So let's, uh, let's bring it up now to 100 megahertz. All right, 692. So we're still around about the same. Let's bring it up to the rated 110. It's uh, peaking a little bit there, 700 millivolts. Let's see if it'll do 150. Peaking a little bit more at 150, so it'll definitely do 150. Let's try 200. Okay, so at 200, we're at 760 millivolts. So we're still fine at 200. Let's uh, bring it up to, let's try 250. Okay, now we've dropped down below our 475. Let's back it up a little bit. Try 230. 592, let's try 240. Yep, 240 megahertz. We're doing fine. So it's probably about around about 240, 245. Now where this 110 megahertz comes in is if, uh, if I switch on another channel, okay, things go off the wall. So let's bring it back down again to our 110 and do our auto setup here. Okay, 
Okay, and bring in channel three. So we can see this is where things get a, a little bit limited around the, the 110 if, if you have multiple channels on. Now, one of the things that, that bothers me about the way this is set up, I, I really do like it as a single channel scope, or even if you have this channel on here, okay, nothing really changes a lot. So we're still at 500 mega samples per second. But the thing is now, if I switch on the channel over here, it drops down to 250 mega samples per second. And that really limits your bandwidth way down from there. So we might ha we might be lucky to have a, a bandwidth of 55 megahertz. So let let's have a look at that. Right, that brings us back to 720 millivolts. So having these two channels on, or having all four in fact, because it doesn't change after that. They split it this way instead of this way. So what what I would like to have seen is like channel one here and channel two here. So when I can have this on and this on at the same time. I still have 500 mega samples per second and I still have my 110 megahertz of useful bandwidth. That is a little bit of a failing. This has all the basic things in it. I'm not going to go through everything, but what I really want to show you is that folks in this price range normally don't have a great FFT function, but I want to show you this one. I mean, this one is actually really useful. So let's take this off and I want to put on a square wave so I can get some nice harmonics to show you. Okay, we're back here. I've got a one kilohertz square wave going into it. And what I want to do is I want to enable the math functions on this. So we'll go in here and I think it's already selected for fast Fourier transform, but now our sample is not big enough for it to do any kind of calculations on it. So let's bring this to about 50 milliseconds here. You can have a look at that there. You can see that we definitely have harmonics showing up, but what's the information about them? Because the axes aren't shown, but that's what we have the cursors for. So if we bring up the cursors here, move the cursor number one over here to our fundamental frequency. So we've got that set up at one kilohertz. And then we want to measure frequency between it and the next harmonic. So we'll go over here now, we'll pick up the B cursor and we'll bring it over to the next harmonic here. Yeah, so that's right at two kilohertz. So that is a uh, actual distortion. So we're getting the, the square wave we're putting in is a little bit distorted because that's an even harmonic. We shouldn't be even seeing that in there. Now let's go over to the third harmonic, which is be one of interest for a square wave. And we can see that that is indeed at three kilohertz right there. So that is a, a harmonic of importance. And let's try and see what the difference is between the voltages. We we'll put this over to amplitude, and then let's adjust the B cursor up to the amplitude of this here, and then we'll adjust the A cursor up to the amplitude of the fundamental. And now we can see that uh, the fundamental is at 7.8 dB, and the third harmonic is right here at minus 2.8 dB, so we have a total of 10.6 dB down. And then we can check the fifth harmonic see how far down it is and we're down to 15 db and let's check the seventh harmonic it's down at 18 db but it is interesting here that we're also bringing up those even harmonics which means that our square wave is not the greatest square wave in the world now let's uh, pop in a, a nice sine wave here and see what happens so now we can see that we have much nicer waveform coming in here because it's a fairly good sine wave. Right here we have a harmonic at uh, three kilohertz. It reaches a maximum around about there. So it's down 51 dB. The FFT function in this is really quite useful indeed. Another thing about it that I don't necessarily like that much is the single shot trigger. So if we go into the trigger menu here and we go to single, if I go press run again, it goes back to auto. So I have to bring up the menu again, and then I got to set single again. It's not a terrible thing, it's, but it's just a little a bit of an annoyance. If this is just your first scope, it's perfect scope for that. It's inexpensive. You can get into everything very easily, and the buttons are all very nice. The encoders are very, very nice too. The pots are very, very nice. Everything is just as good as I have on my Siglet scope as far as touch and feel goes. One nice feature about it is that you don't often see on scopes in this price range is the matte finish on the screen. It's a very functional scope, it does the job, and like I say, if you're just into one single channel mode, you do have a heck of a lot more than 110 megahertz. Um, then that of course drops down to 110 megahertz as soon as you click on channel 2, and you get down to 55 megahertz once you get four channels on.
you know, for a sub $200 oscilloscope, and that's in US dollars, I think it hits the mark pretty nicely. It does the business, as they say. And the last few minutes, I've been running it off this power bank here. Very portable when you can do that to it. If you go back to my other video on revamping my lab, you'll see that the other devices that I purchased, such as the multimeter and frequency generator, all seem to be very, very good for their price. And indeed, if you've got this oscilloscope, this power supply, that function generator and that multimeter, you would have all the instruments you need for a pretty competent lab for under $700 US. Pretty impressive considering the capabilities of these instruments. Thanks for coming out folks. I hope you got something out of this and I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.